Well, good afternoon, everyone. Back in the shop after about a week's, I guess you could call it a vacation. <laughs> you know, I told you in my last video, my son was getting married. So we spent the week down in Greensboro and just got back last week and had a beautiful wedding. Everything was real nice. Uh, you know, this was the day after Hurricane Florence came through. So there was a lot of places in Greensboro that were still without power. And one of the places was the uh, area that we had the wedding in. But, you know, the wedding was during the day. The reception that night, there was no power. But it was still beautiful. It was all done by candlelight. So, uh, very, very nice wedding. Uh, the people that owned the venue did a wonderful job. So, we had a great time, but we went ahead and spent a few more days down there and took the grandkids to the uh, Nature and Science Museum and just had a wonderful time. Got back, walked a few days, and here it is Saturday. And on the bench is the SBE SB 36 HF transceiver. And this is one of the radios I have been working on for a long time. And if you remember back a couple of videos ago, I mentioned that I had some uh, SD card failures and drive failures. Well, all that video that I had shot on troubleshooting the receiver on this particular radio <laughs> got lost on those cards and you know the counter wouldn't display correctly uh, there was just a little hiss in the receiver you could generate a tone to it but not pick nothing up and one of the first things that come to mind and that I found out was no 9 megahertz from the 9 megahertz oscillator I said, okay, no problem. I got two of these radios. So I went and pulled the 9 megahertz oscillator from the other radio, plugged it in, still nothing. So I spent quite a bit of time troubleshooting, trying to find out why the 9 megahertz was not working. You know, basically looking through to see if there was something that was dragging the signal down never could find that who would have known that both radios actually have the exact same problem both of them the 9 megahertz oscillator was faulty so I thought that was very interesting now being that I couldn't find nothing else wrong in the radio I you know finally decided that it had to be in the oscillator unit itself so no big deal grab the schematic and go to town right well the only part of the schematic luckily it does cover the 9 megahertz oscillator but when you look at it here is the circuit for the 9 megahertz oscillator and when you look down at it, you can see just how poorly it is. So in those videos that got lost, we went through and we figured out just how this thing was working and what was going on. And what we found was TR-17. This in this oscillator was bad. Let me pop this one open and I'll uh, show you. So here's the uh, inside of the oscillator. We put some light down here on it. But you can see it. You can see that's all crystal. And right beside it is a 2SC458 transistor. And that transistor in the unit that's in the radio now had gone kaput. No longer worked. So I replaced that, 
put the unit back in and <laughs> I'm going to tell you this wasn't that easy task uh, you know loosen up the uh, bolts for the circuit board is no problem but you still can't remove it because everything is soldered to all these pins on this end and you got this relay here that is soldered to ground on both sides so all that had to be unsoldered a lot of these wires had to be desoldered from the uh, pins of the jack and then I was able to get the board out to replace the transistor I just didn't think you know I don't cut parts out and solder back to the old leads that probably would have worked in this case but I just don't like doing it that way so I had to tear that thing down and replace that and I went ahead and checked some of these high value resistors in here and replaced those also but we got all that back up and going and now and just to show you also the, uh, the schematic it is horrible <laughs> that's not even uh, a legend in here to show you what all the controls or the uh, circuit boards inside or not silk screened to tell you what everything is so you got all these controls that are on circuit boards that you have to sit down through the schematic and follow wiring in this radio to find just exactly what everything is I'll go ahead and uh, turn the generator on And you know, see now the radio is receiving. Now I'll cut that noise down so you don't have to listen to it because you already see it's receiving. But the problem I have to troubleshoot now is the S meter. Um, the S meter does not work. Um, looking at the the circuit in the uh, schematic, and I see that VR. 14 sets the uh, zero for the S meter. Now you know on most HF amateur radios you set the S meter by a part on the back of the radio. This is not so. This part is hidden somewhere in this radio so I got to get in here and locate that because if that part's gone dirty or, or bad then the S meter's not going to work at all. So we got to find it and check it but yeah um, I can go ahead and this is receiving with a minus 73 dBm signal and it's receiving real good I can go ahead and drop the signal down and you see the S meter still does not even wiggle so one thing we have to do is check the S meter um, if you check it in the S meter, do not check it with just a, a standard uh, voltmeter because just the voltage from a voltmeter can burn the coil up out of the meter. So that would not be a good thing to do. So I got my AF output meter, and on the top of it is a S meter, and I got everything wired in. So now we can just check to see if the S meter in the radio is bad. And I'll just turn the uh, signal on. And no deflection on the meter whatsoever. So now we know that it is in the circuit somewhere and not in the meter itself. So we're going to get in here and start troubleshooting that. See if we can figure out why the meter is not working. And another thing to confirm it is that these two radios, although they are built just about alike, many, many differences in the circuit boards. Uh, none of the circuit boards, especially the oscillator board, is nothing alike in the two radios. Neither one of them match the schematic that we have so that makes troubleshooting 
a lot harder now. I took the time in the other videos to trace through stuff, trying to get the receiver going in, making little notes here and there, and drawing out some schematics by hand to figure out just what was going on. At the moment, our schematic gives us an idea of what's going on. Like VR14. This radio does not have a VR14 <laughs> that I can find. Uh, I have gone through just about every control. This is your mic amplifier circuit here. So, you know, nothing is matching the schematic. And that must make troubleshooting a radio like this very diff difficult. Uh, it's like they built one radio and then the next one, well, let's build it a little different. And then the next one, they even build it different. But they did not go by the schematic. So, yeah, makes things a little tough. So, as I said before, tracing through the radio and the schematic is a little bit hard to do because nothing matches up. But we know here on the back of our meter, we have a green wire and an orange wire. And we'll follow those back and we'll see that they come to this relay right here. And this relay is very easy to take out. And what we need to do is check this relay. We look here at our schematic. We can get a general idea of what's going on with it. Right here. We can see SM1, SM2 on both sides of the relay. And the relay just puts the meter in the receive mode or transmit mode. So we can see here that we need to find SM1 and SM2 on the schematic. And where we're going to find this at is going to be over on the receive IF amp and AGC amp location. And that will be here. So let's in this block here and looking over here. We can now see SM1 and SM2 and there is our R14 which is a 3K potentiometer. So we'll have to locate. Now we already know now with the green wires and the uh, orange wires attached to on the bottom side of the relay. So we can take this relay now and check it to make sure that this relay is not bad by doing a continuity test on it. So looking at the bottom of the radio we know that the orange wire attaches to this first pin and the way these relays are is that you won't find the connection directly behind it it's going to be over on the side so we'll check the first one and there's the second one so that is making continuity. Now we know the green wire is on this second metal terminal and that's usually going to come over to the other side of the relay. And there it is. So the relay is okay. It's making continuity between those two pins. So now what we need to do is find these two outer pins on the bottom of the uh, radio and then we can find just where the circuit is on the uh, IF board. So looking here we can see our orange wire and our green wire and we know right beside the green wire is where the output is and that's these two white wires going over here to this connection. On orange wire we know it's our second terminal, the first terminal is a white wire and there's the second terminal which is this red wire and it runs right down to here. 
So now we know that this circuit somewhere up in here is where we need to be looking for to find our issue on the estimator. So if we go back on the top and we look here at the relay and we know that we saw one wire that went over here and one other wire that came down this way we can find a control right here and I don't know if you'll be able to see this in the camera or not I don't think you can because it's written very lightly it's got 3k ohm stamped on it so that is our S meter zero adjust so now we can start working through this we know exactly where this circuit is on the schematic and we can get this S meter back working okay again this is where uh, things get really different I'm in here and I check this potentiometer and it's right at 3k no problem it's showing that the center wiper is connected to this diode to E25 and that one side of the uh, potentiometer goes up through this 10k resistor and then the other side just goes on down and no other resistors in the uh, in the leg well actually that's not how it even is it's not even close to looking like that if we uh, get back in here and look the center wiper and the leg on this side of the capacitor by this um, ceramic disc capacitor go straight to this uh, see this ground plane silk screen on here it's connected directly to it this leg here is tied to this resistor which comes up and goes right through this transistor so uh, again you can see the schematic is not even close on how this thing is built so right at this moment I'm gonna have to look at checking this uh, transistor and see if we can find out just what's going on there we have already checked through a lot of this circuitry that has to deal with the, uh, the S meter we know the relay is good so we get the signal through there there's a transistor here which is uh, supposed to be a 2SC uh, no excuse me 2SK25 and it's been either replaced with a K41 or a K41 might have been installed from the factory I know the pinout on the way that the holes are positioned on the board do not match this present transistor but I'm looking through here and I'm finding other similarities with that so this may have been whatever they had in stock that they used at the time I did pull this transistor out so FET and I checked it and it checks okay uh, I have noticed also that as I'm working through this board and taking voltage measurements and stuff to receive kind of goes in and out a little bit so I'm finding a lot of these controls in here these potentiometers are dirty and you know looking at the board we can see that the board is dirty it's had a lot of dust in it at places then I figured out after looking at this even closer that somebody has already been in here working on this problem if you look at these uh, glass signal diodes here you can see the ends has been clipped and lifted up and probably tested I don't like it when people do stuff like that you know if you want if you got to take it out of circuit desolder it it's not that hard to do you know and lift it up and check it then put it back in the solder on the back side clipping components is not something I like to do for testing purposes it's just a to me it's a sloppy work but it looks like uh, the main thing I'm gonna have to do is get in here start changing out all these electrolytics 
I'm going to have to pull all these controls out, turn them over, and, uh, and clean them, and then put them back in. I may can try to clean them while they're still in the circuit, but, you know, the uh, carbon track is on the back of these. And it's a little hard to get in there to make sure you're cleaning it good. But I'll, I will try that before I pull them out. I did pull this control out over here and tested it to make sure you know this was the right control for the S meter zero now in our schematic you know we figured out that this over here was a big part of the S meter circuit because that's the S meter zero adjustment but right here I just happened to catch this and this says S meter and it looks like sense maybe that's for sensitivity of the S meter so one thing that they did not do on the schematic they did not mark this control of the value we have a diode on the center wiper and it comes up and then one end of the uh, resistor shows a zener diode now this center wiper comes up and it goes over to TR28 which is 2SC458 we also have a leg that goes down to the uh, switch for fast slow off for your AGC so I need to get in there and find this circuit here which you know it's going to be different in the radio because like I say this schematic does not match this radio or the other radio but you know it's it's all that we have to go off of if you go on the internet and you search for SB-36 you're not going to find a whole lot of information it's just nothing that has been posted on it so I'm going to have to go ahead and see can I find this sensitivity control I'm thinking uh, let me move the camera I'm almost thinking that that may be the control here. Now the other control is way over there. But I just about believe that this is going to be the sensitivity control. And, you know, without having the proper schematic on this uh, particular radio, it kind of makes it a little hard to trace out and figure it out so I had to go ahead and test and and see uh, if I can follow where it goes through and find out just exactly what's going on this will make this radio <laughs> very hard to align as you can see these uh, pots that are here someone has marked them with a black marker now sometimes this is done at the factory but if you look at it, we know that they've all been tuned off from where they was marked at. I and mean, if you get right here, look at this one. You can see that the marks are here, but the uh, core slot is straight. So yes, yeah, somebody's been tuning and, and working in here and trying to uh, work through these problems. And anytime you're going back behind what someone else has done, it does make things a little more difficult we just don't know what they've done we don't know what they've replaced they don't we don't know if they replaced it with a correct component we don't know if they had the component orientated right or just what so it really makes it tough but you know it's a challenge and that's what we like as challenges is receiving pretty decent not bad at all 
we own 20 meters and it's about 11.30 in the morning station in there this morning. side band. Activity on 40. CW is good. Only one voice station heard. But the radio uh, is coming to life. I just hate it that uh, you know all the other footage of getting the receiver up and running was uh, was lost. But we still have a lot more to do to this radio. Um, quite a bit more. And then you know we do have a second unit that's built. It looks the same on the outside, but it's different on the inside, put it that way, that we go through. So, you know, I'm not worried about losing any more footage now. Not least the camera was to die when I was recording, but I would know that right off hand, you know. So, eh, it is what it is, but yeah, we still, you know, like I say, we still got a lot to do to this radio. I'm going to go ahead and have to get the rest of these caps out of here and get them replaced. And do some cleaning on these boards and that's I think that's going to be the biggest thing now is getting uh, everything cleaned up like it's supposed to we got to find out what's going on with this uh, 
second digit here. Let me see if I can get the camera zoomed in on that a little better. It's a little bit hard to see in the camera, but let me get a stick here. You know, we're on 7.233 megahertz, and this 7, you can slightly see it in the camera, the roundish part right here. There's another element in the back, which looks like the 9 is slightly glowing, and you know, doesn't matter whatever frequency you go to that one element is still glowing back there in the back so you know we got to go through this and find out what's causing that now it's probably one of the drivers is shorted and it's causing that problem as it's supposed to be 21 megahertz and you know you can still see that that circle in the background growing that's 28 and it's still in there so if we imagine if we go down to 29 megahertz now it looks like it's supposed to so yeah that 9 is on all the time and it's probably something in the driver circuit that has shorted or gone back and it's not turning that 9 uh, num you know my 9 digit off so you know after we go through the whole radio get the radio working then we'll focus on fixing this Nixie 2 counter so it'll read correctly so you know on radios like this there's a lot of circuitry that's in a mix between transmitter and receiver we already figured out our S meter does not work and like I said we're going to go in do a lot of cleaning and replacing those capacitors and uh, checking out all these VRs but one of the things that really does uh, you know I had to question does the S meter work in transmit mode now we haven't done any testing on this other than I did take the tubes out and test in fact I tested all the tubes and all the tubes are good now this radio uses a pair of 6KD6 weep tubes in the uh, amplifier section so all I want to do is just check and see if there's any output whatsoever in this rig. I've still got it tuned to 14200. We're into the IFR using it as a dummy load. And also we'll be able to see on the spectrum analyzer. And I've got the uh, meter set for power out on the 15 watt scale peak. So we should be able to see if there's anything that comes out of it. So. I'm going to switch over to the tune mode and I'll go ahead and hit the send button first of all I want to put this on IP so we'll hit the send mode and we can see that our meter is coming up so that's an indication that it is the meter does work in the transmit mode so that tells that our meter is probably most likely fine we look over here on the spectrum analyzer and I hit send yeah you can see a little spike come up and when we turn the pre-select we're able to bring it up and down let me position the camera so y'all it's bright in here today so uh, I'm not trying to move the camera around so much but yeah there's a little blip going up to about minus 30 no, minus 90 dBm and I am seeing just about a half a watt out over on the power meter okay again uh, when we flip this in in the IP mode you can see we are getting a reading in RF mode there's nothing out whatsoever but if we look over at the IFR power meter and I flip to CN we can see just about a 
half a watt output. Now this is telling me that the driver stage is working, but for some reason the um, PA compartment is not producing any power out. Now that could be a number of things. Uh, weak driver tube, uh, some coupling capacitors in between the uh, driver and the transmitter. I did check the voltage on it and the voltage was way well over 800 volts. And just because you check a tube and it shows okay doesn't exactly mean that the tube is perfect. There still could be some problems in the tube and it just doesn't show up on a tube tester. The best way to test the tube is in a circuit anyway. So, you know, it could be something in the uh, output section that's not working correctly. Uh, you know, bad resistors, bad uh, grid resistors, or the bias is not getting to the tubes. Also, that, you know, we're seeing it up here, but could be something with the, uh, the biasing of the tubes. So that's something else we got to check into on this thing. So, uh, yeah, you know, there's not a whole lot more I can do with the S meter until I get some new components in. So, we're going to go ahead and take the bottom off of the PA compartment. Just have a peek in there and see if we see anything that looks bad. So, as you can see under the PA compartment, there's not really a whole lot going on in here other than the uh, one of the tuning capacitors. We have a relay and the end of the band switch. And you can see the RF choke. Now the tubes lay horizontal in this uh, radio. So, you know, all your grid resistors and stuff is going to be in, on the top side. So, uh, other than, you know, the band switch back here in the back and the relay, there's not really a whole lot going on back here to, to worry about. But, you know, like I said, I just wanted to get in here and take a look and make sure that everything was looking like it's supposed to I want to go ahead and take a look at our drive power coming out of our 6BQ5 driver tube you see right here there is a molded mica cap right here and this is coming from the tube and that's coming through the cap on this side let me just uh, take a look on the output of that micro multi cap and see what we see on the scope. Okay, and we'll switch over to CN. And you can see there is a very, very weak signal coming out of that micro multi cap. So I'll go to the input side of it. And still, that is a very weak, non-defined signal coming out. Now, this could indicate that our driver tube is definitely bad, or we're not getting much signal into the driver tube from another stage. At this point, it's kind of hard to tell. I got our 6BQ5 in our Hitchcock 800A and got everything set for 6BQ5 and uh, do the line test make sure that's right that looks good and we'll come here and we'll press P4 and see what we get and as you can see this tube is way gone <laughs> it is in terrible shape I grabbed a 6BQ5 out of the other radio and got it in here check the line Put that right and we'll test it and it is also weak or very weak that will not produce any power hardly. 
I went ahead and replaced the 6BQ5 driver tube and uh, we'll go to the CW mode and I'll go up here to the IFR watt meter I think you can see that pretty good we'll flip it over to CN And as you can see, plenty of RF power out. And now I got the meter in RF out. We'll flip over to CN. So uh, we now have power out. That's probably been the easiest thing on this radio to get working. So that next two counter has really been bothering me seeing that 9 showing up in the uh, second display the whole time it was on. And, you know, I started thinking maybe it's not in the counter. Perhaps uh, we have some dirty wafer contacts in here and you know we have a lot of contacts in this band switch and all that plays a part on how this counter read so I'm gonna go ahead and clean all these switches I'm not gonna bore you with uh, showing you how to do that and I've done that in so many different videos so I'm gonna go ahead and clean these switches and we'll just see if it makes any difference at all well after cleaning the switches have a look at that 14.2 there's no 9 showing up in there anymore 7 megahertz 3.7 700 kilohertz 29.7 21 you can see a good detail on 21 14 so now that 9 is gone and all it was was a dirty contact in one of those wafer switches now which one it was I'm not sure because I went ahead and cleaned them all still uh, you know it's a little noisy still when you change the uh, bands but maybe I need to go back and clean some more but uh, yeah that took care of that problem progress today so the receiver is just working super and I have the transmitter working so we got a real decent baseline for a restoration so we can go ahead and get on with the rest of it I'm just sorry that y'all missed the other two hours of uh, <laughs> going through this thing and searching through the schematic it was just it was a <laughs> very hard procedure and I really don't want to go through it again uh, not on this radio we'll probably have to do it on the uh, other one that's sitting over there so but we got a good uh, good outline of what's going on like I say I'm gonna go ahead and get rest of the caps get all these old caps out I got a lot more tons of resistors to check out and there's a lot of uh, discoloration on some of these ceramic caps in here I don't know if somebody in the past has tried to clean this radio. I'll show you what I'm talking about. We take a look at some of these uh, ceramic caps in here. You can see how discolored they are. Especially like this one right here. It's almost turned white. I, don't, I do not know what's going on with that. It's not nothing on the cap, it's the uh, ceramic itself. So I don't know if somebody used any harsh cleaner or something on it. I did go back and I cleaned this circuit board and you see just how nice and shiny this board is when it's cleaned properly. But 
Yeah, I, I don't know. We'll have to test a few of these and and see if they're okay. I don't know if they've been moisture impregnated or, or what it is or somebody's cleaning fluid. Um, I do not see it over on the uh, other side of the radio. Those look normal. But the ones over here on the RFIF board um, really look bad. Uh, where am I at? There I am. <laughs> Sorry about that. Camera was moving by itself. But yeah, we'll have to get in there and see what we can do. Something else I did in the uh, lost videos was to get the band edge lights working and timing properly. Um, so another thing I have to do is uh, I'm going to replace these old lamps in here with some LEDs. Uh, this one here is out. I had to go through this and get these things to illuminate when they were supposed to. When you get to the band edge, you can see it lights up. When I go all the way up to 14.500, this one does not illuminate. It has voltage on it, but the lamp's out, so it doesn't work. That was a bit of a chore to get that timing done on that like it was supposed to be. But all that was in those lost videos. So <laughs> you know, maybe we'll have to do the same thing on the other one too. So you'll be able to see more about how we went through some of this process to get this receiver up and running. I just hate it that I lost all that video, but that's the way it goes sometimes. So guys, you know, I get tons of emails a week. I mean, well over a thousand. And a lot of them are asking if I can work on this for them, if I can work on that for them. Uh, several things. I cannot answer every email that comes in. Especially when it's, you know, a thousand plus a week. If I did that, I would spend time doing nothing but emails and not doing any work on the bench or not making any videos to help you guys learn. So, if some of you, you know, if I'm not getting back to you, it's not that I'm annoying you. It's just that I just don't have time. Uh, as simple as that. Some guys ask, you know, if I can repair something or if I can restore something. I don't think they know the difference between repair and restore. Now this radio, I am trying to restore it back the way it's supposed to be. And that is a very, very, very costly process. And going in and repairing something, it's just going there, you find out what's wrong with it, what needs to be done, you fix it. When you restore, you're doing a complete restoration of a unit. And sometimes that can be five times as much as a repair. You know, you can't charge but just so much because you're overcharged from what a unit is worth. But the reason why I'm going through this one so much is that the gentleman that owns this said that I can have the other one if I get this one fixed. So that's why I'm taking the time and, and going through this one and getting everything on it just right like it's supposed to be. But you know, think about that when you do ask if you want a radio repaired or restored what you're looking at. A lot of times I get people, what will I charge to do this? What will I charge to do that? Well, when it comes to these old radios, I cannot give you a price. I can't even give you a ballpark figure because we do not know what has to be done to it. But anyway, if I'm not answering your emails, don't think that I'm ignoring you. It's just that I do not have time every week to go through a thousand emails. It's, there's just no way. And I'm not going to pay somebody to sit down and do it for me because they couldn't answer the questions the way I would answer them. So, you know... If you email, you don't hear from me, try emailing again. A lot of times if I'm sitting at the computer desk and the email pops up, I can answer it right then while I'm, while I'm sitting there. But after I've been at work for 12 hours a day and come home, I just don't have the time to do it. 
Okay, enough of that raining anyway, so uh, next video, look, when we get a chance to shoot some more video on this, uh, we'll be going through and doing a lot of voltage checks and making sure that everything is within line. I did a preliminary voltage check the first thing just to make sure all the voltages was present and one of the other problems I did have a problem with was the negative 9 volt rail but it's up at about uh, around minus 7 volts or so so we got to look at that and find out what's going on with it so will be plenty more videos on this radio and the uh, sister unit sitting over there to it so stay tuned you know stick with me we'll get work through it and uh, hoping that the gentleman that owns this will see that we have made some progress on it so maybe that'll make him happy <laughs> anyway until the next video we'll see you bye